بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سهل ابن سعد one of the companions one of the prophets صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم companions may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, people will continue to be all right. He means the Muslims. So the Muslims will continue to be all right as long as they hasten in the breaking of the fast. As long as they speed, as long as they make the breaking of the fast as soon as the sun sets. This hadith tells us that it is essential for Muslims to break the fast at the end of the day. It is not preferable, it is not commendable, it is not uh, acceptable for you to delay it like a minute or two, five, ten, fifteen minutes. It is not acceptable. Why? Because this is not the doing of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet tells us وسلم, that you have done what you should have done. You fasted, you fasted the whole day. Okay. Now, the sun has set, you should break your fast immediately. And this is something, and this is a healthy sign, that the people, that the Muslims are, are all right. Because if they don't do this, if they delay it, this means that they're not following the sunnah. They're not following the path and instructions of the Prophet ﷺ. This means that they are changing and altering the religion of Islam, bit by bit. And this is where the innovation comes in. If you follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ, I guarantee to you that you are, will end up in paradise. Because this is where the Prophet ﷺ is. So just follow his footsteps. Don't do anything more than what he has done. Don't invent. Don't bring things uh, to, to, to this religion thinking that, well, the Prophet ﷺ might have missed this. And the Prophet ﷺ should have done this. No, he should not. By thinking this, you are saying that the Prophet ﷺ was ignorant. You're saying that Allah Azza wa did not reveal the full religion to the Prophet ﷺ? You, th you are saying, you are implementing the, uh, uh, that you know better than the Prophet ﷺ. And this is a grave sin if it, if it does not take you away from Islam 100%. So you should follow the footsteps. And his footsteps, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was to break the fast as soon as the sun has set. He just breaks the fast. And there is a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, was with his companions and the sun has set. So he told his companion, bring us something to break our fast with. So uh, the companion was hesitant because although the sun has set, yet there, there is some light. You can, of course, after sunset, there, there would be some light in, uh, in, in, in uh, the horizon. So the Prophet again said, bring us something to break our fast. So the companion said, well, if we wait a little bit, it would be better. For the third time, the Prophet told him, bring us something to eat, which illustrates that this is not, not a thing to delay. This is the sunnah, to have it as soon as possible. Okay, you break your fast. But what do you break your fast with? 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, uh, when one of you breaks his fast, he should do so with some dates. If he can't get any, then he should break his fast on water. In Arabia, we have lots of dates, alhamdulillah. But in countries like in Europe, for example, maybe it's difficult for, for them to get dates. The Sunnah, as the Prophet used to do it, والسلام, he used to break his fast with ripe dates. Rutab. This is the first step. If it's not there, then he would go to break his fast with dates, normal dates, the dry one. And if, if he did not have any, he would drink water. Now, the reason behind that, medically, physically, doctors know this. Because it is very light on the stomach. The dates uh, is rich with, with uh, nutritious uh, uh, stuff. And, uh, and the blood uh, circulates this uh, uh, nutritious, uh, uh, nourishing uh, material in, in the whole body. And immediately you feel the power coming back to you. Some scholars say, okay, if I don't have ripe dates, and I, if I don't have dates, can I have some sweets instead? Well, this is a matter of dispute. Can I have other fruit that contains uh, gelicos and, and, and the natural sweets uh, in, in it? This is a matter of a dispute because we cannot pinpoint the reason 100% and say that this is why we should break our fast. We know that the Prophet did that and we do as he did. But if there is no date, can we make another substitute or just stick to water? Personally, I would think that sticking to water is the best choice because they had fruit, they had grapes. He could have had this instead of drinking water, but there were three uh, options or choices for the Prophet ﷺ. Ripe dates, if not dates, if not water. So I see no conflict if you drink water and then take another fruit afterwards. But you've done what the Prophet ﷺ did at the very beginning, which is sipping or drinking water. Then you've, uh, you took whatever you wanted uh, afterwards. Breaking your fast should not be in a heavy meal. N and this is exactly what we are uh, doing. We break our fast by eating as much as we can to substitute uh, the loss of, of meals in the past 16 or 17 hours. This is wrong. And this is against the wisdom of, of fasting. You should break your fast and you should eat, but you should not uh, do it real heavy because this, uh, this is bad for your health and this would affect your fasting, uh, your uh, prayer at night, taraweeh, night prayer. This would affect your uh, mobility. You will feel uh, heavy and you just want to sit down to digest whatever uh, you had uh, earlier. So the best thing is to be fair, to eat what you like to eat, but not to eat it with uh, results that cause obesity, for example. A lot of people just, when they eat, they eat. They do it uh, to, the, to, to, to the full. Eat whatever they want, as if they're going to uh, a, a country uh, struck by a famine. They say, well, we have to store whatever we can now. No, this is against the, 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 the wisdom and the virtues of, of Ramadan. Do it, but do it normally in a normal uh, uh, way. And if we notice that a lot of the food that we don't eat is thrown into the, our gar garbage can. And this is a, a, a sin. This is haram. It's forbidden for us to waste this uh, food and to throw it away. There are so many poor people around us that could benefit, that can, u can use this food. And we could utilize the money that we make, we're making in this food by giving it to the poor. It's, it's, it's nonsense to have a six meter long table with food while your neighbor doesn't have the money to buy dates to break his fast. It is a major sin to have your neighbor hungry while you are not, while you are full and you have all the food you, you, you uh, want. This is against Islam. There's a hadith in this sense. 
And this shows us that it is not I that I should care about. I should care about the, my neighbors. I should check out my neighbors. How, uh, how is their welfare? Are there, uh, do they have food? Are they content? Are they in need of, of help, financial help? I should help them instead of uh, going around and, and wasting money on buying food, desserts, and things that have no uh, benefit to uh, the Muslim society. I mentioned earlier that it is a sunnah, it is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu to narrate a certain prayer after uh, Fatur. The Prophet used to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ذهب الظمع, after breaking his fast, immediately he would say, Alhamdulillah, the thirst has gone. This is number one. And he would say, and the veins are nourished or watered, are wet with, 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 the, with the water and the food I, I, after being so dry. Now they, alhamdulillah, are, are watered or are wet. And the uh, reward of fasting is settled and is fixed. Alhamdulillah, I've got that because I've accomplished my mission I, I did my target, which was fasting the whole day. This dua, the Prophet used to say والسلام, after breaking his fast. If we notice that a lot of the food that we don't eat is thrown into the, our gar garbage can, and this is a, a, a sin, this is haram, it's forbidden for us to waste this uh, food and to throw it away. There are so many poor people around us that could benefit, that can, u can use this food, and we could utilize the money that we make, we're making in this food by giving it to the poor. It's, it's, it's nonsense to have a six meter long table with food while your neighbor doesn't have the money to buy dates to break his fast. It is a major sin to have your neighbor hungry while you are not, while you are full and you have all the food you, you, you uh, want. This is against Islam. There's a hadith in this sense. And this shows us that it is not I that I should care about. I should care about the, my neighbors. I should check out my neighbors. How, uh, how is their welfare? Are there, uh, do they have food? Are they content? Are they in need of, of help, financial help? I should help them instead of uh, going around and, and wasting money on buying food, desserts, and uh, things that have no uh, benefit to uh, the Muslim society. I mentioned earlier that it is a sunnah, it is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu to narrate a certain prayer after uh, Fatur. The Prophet used to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ذهب الظمع, after breaking his fast, immediately he would say, Alhamdulillah, the thirst has gone. So this is number one. And he would say, and the veins are nourished or watered, are wet with, 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 the, with the water and the food I, I, after being so dry. Now they, alhamdulillah, are, are watered or are wet. And the uh, reward of fasting is settled and is fixed. Alhamdulillah, I've got that because I've accomplished my mission I, I did my target, which was fasting the whole day. This dua, the Prophet used to say والسلام, after breaking his fast. Uh, also, one of the things that we should always bear in mind, that what is the easiest way to get reward without doing any effort? See, teaching is the best thing. If I teach you to say something, if I teach you to pray, if I teach you to fast, and you learn this from me, whenever you pray, while I'm sitting home reading a book, I get the same reward you get. And if I do this on a large scale, like we're doing now, whatever uh, you people do, I get the reward, alhamdulillah. And those who taught me will get the reward, and those who taught them will get the reward, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, would get the maximum reward. So no matter what you do of good deeds, it will be redirected again multiplied and redirected to the Prophet Sallallahu So even in fasting, you can get this reward. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever breaks the fast of a fasting uh, person will get an equivalent reward. 
breaking the fast, that means at the end of the day, not in the middle of the day. You can break someone fasting by fighting with him. And he fights back with you. He broke his fasting. He said, Alhamdulillah, now I get the reward. No, you don't get the reward. You get the sin. No, the Prophet means, Man fattara sa'iman, meaning that he gave him something to eat to break his fast at the end of the day. And, and this is the custom in the Muslim world, worldwide. You would find that uh, the women, the wives, the mothers, would spend three hours in the kitchen during the daytime cooking and making some busak, making food, making meals. And before the break of, uh, before uh, sunset, they would give it to their kids and instruct them to take this food to uh, their neighbors who are poor or to uh, their neighbors who are uh, well off, but it's, it's, it's kind of a gesture of, of, of generosity. So they give them this food and instruct them to take it to the mosque. A lot of the guys go to the mosque to break their fast in congregation and then pray Maghrib together. It's a sign of unity. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful scene to see when you find all the rich and the poor at, are sitting on the, on, the, on the same ground, eating the same food and praying together in the same mosque. No color differences, no segregation, no position awareness. It, they're all intermingled. The, 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 the CEO is sitting with the janitor, and they're all eating from the same plate, and they're all saying, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam, and they're praying shoulder to shoulder, uh, side by side. There is no difference among Muslims, blacks, whites, red, no race at all because they all share the same word la ilaha illallah they're muslims there is no segregation none whatsoever and there is no religion that has this we have it and we we are practicing it alhamdulillah azza wa jal so it's a beautiful scene to see you should all try to visit your local mosque have a break your fast with, with, with the Muslims, with the brothers, and see how, fu how fun and nice it is to be among your uh, brothers um, does anybody have any question related to the subject? Yes. Uh, is it acceptable for a fasting person to use a toothpaste? Uh, toothpaste. Toothpaste. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, if he's going to eat the toothpaste, no, it's not acceptable. He, he would be breaking his fast. But if you want to uh, brush your teeth, clean your teeth, mm. it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it, providing that you make sure that nothing goes inside your stomach. Uh, I have to remind you that the smell of the mouth, you know, it changes after six or seven hours of not eating. This smell may irritate you. It's a bad smell to us. It doesn't smell good. I wouldn't go kiss my wife having it because I, I don't want to do something that uh, puts her away uh, from me normally. But uh, I would uh, remind you that this smell there's a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that this smell, khaluf al-sa'im, the smell uh, that ca uh, is caused by uh, not eating because of fasting, is better at the side of Allah than the smell of musk. So there's no reason for you to remove it. Nevertheless, if you want to remove it, it's okay. Using the toothbrush, which, which is what we call al-miswak, this is a plant that we uh, get from the, the, from the ground, it has s fantastic and superb characters, uh, characteristics in it that cures uh, cavities, uh, uh, helps the gum. And doctors, physicians, dentists know all about it. It's, it's the number one enemy of dentists. That's why Muslims who use it don't go to dentists, and that's why dentists don't like it. But I was joking. Muslim dentists all use it. This thing, a lot of people think that it is not uh, permissible for you to use before the, uh, the sunset, like three, four hours. Why they think that, that because the smell is better at the side of Allah than the smell of musk, then we should keep it. Well, we should increase it. Well, we should use some mouth wash that increases the smell and makes it, you know, uh, unacceptable for others. No, no, this is not the case. The smell results from worship. And because it is a result of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it and it's better than the smell of musk. But you may, you may use, you may brush your teeth any time of the day. On the contrary, the Prophet ﷺ used to brush his teeth so often during fasting 
than he used to do it otherwise. And he used to do this before uh, praying, he used to do it after uh, performing ablution, and this is uh, something of his sunnah. Second question, please. Uh, your eminence has said that some people love to stuff their stomachs with different kinds of food after breaking the fast. Uh, would you kindly take us uh, to an invitation to the Prophet's house uh, uh, 1420 something years back in history and uh, tell us what the Prophet used to eat during, the, uh, uh, during having the uh, breakfast meal and uh, the pre-dawn meal? Actually, I wasn't there. I wish I was. It would have been beautiful. But the, 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 you cannot tell what the Prophet ﷺ used to have, except from the hadiths. And I narrated to you one of the hadiths where uh, the companion <coughs> said that he used to break his fast on ripe dates, if not on dates, if not on water. The food that the Prophet ﷺ used to eat is no, nothing close to what we are eating at the moment. The Prophet Sallallahu as narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu she said that it, we used to see the crescent and the following one and the third one. This means that they, they used to pass two months and, and fire would not be lit on the, uh, the, the houses of the Prophet They would not cook anything for two consecutive months. Why? Because they had no food. And he had never eaten, he had never got his stomach full of uh, bread made of wheat. Only bread made of barley and a very bad kind of that. So the Prophet ﷺ did not eat a lot because he did not have food. He, he would pass the days after days without having anything to eat. There is one hadith that he went out and he saw Abu Bakr and Umar. And he asked him, what are you doing? And they all showed him uh, their stomach that they have a stone tightened to their stomach so that they won't feel the hunger. And they were hungry, they didn't have anything to eat. So he showed them his stomach, he had two stones tightened on it. And they went to one of his companions who was a little bit rich. And the guy immediately brought him some dates. He slaughtered one of his small uh, goats and he prepared the food and they drank and ate. And after that he said, by God, by Allah, you will be asked about this blessing. Allah will ask you about this water. Allah will ask you about these dates you have just eaten. Allah will ask you about the meat if there were any meat there. So this is the food, this is the catering, this is the diet of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And until we meet uh, in next uh, session, insha'Allah, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.